This video is brought to you by Squarespace. From website and online store to marketing tools and analytics, Squarespace is the all-in-one platform to build your online presence and run your business. More on this later, but for now, round two of the roundness. <laughs> Obsessive, pristine, roundness. What's up guys, salut, this is Alex. Welcome back to the Meatball series where I'm trying to create the absolute perfect meatball. Now if you remember well, in the previous episode I managed to shape a perfectly round meatball out of a super, super, super soft mixture. The problem is, I was able to do that for a tenth of a second. <laughs> I'm not fast enough to cook meatballs in a tenth of a second. So the question is, how do you freeze that shape? And before you say, use the freezer, the freezing process breaks down the cells walls and so the water leaks out everywhere. You end up with a mush. We need something else. The real enemy of a freshly shaped meatball. Dun, dun, dun. Gravity. The question is, how do we counteract gravity? It is a cooking channel. Unless we are astronauts operating in the International Space Station in absolute weightlessness. It's not doable. International Space Station. I'd love to make a collab with an astronaut. I don't think they would respond to me. However, it came to my attention. Astronauts do not train in space. They train in water. So that thing definitely needs to be explored. How to use water to maintain that perfect roundness, how to use water basically to decrease the impact of gravity on a soft meatball, like using, obviously, Archimedes principle. I said it, I'm gonna use Archimedes principle on a meatball. Life is unexpected. I'm gonna be experimenting, which means that I might need quite a lot of meatball mixture. Let's just prepare some. that I established that the best way to make a perfectly round meatball is by using a meatball gun. I went back to the drawing board and made a version 2 of the meatball gun. This is the new one. <laughs> now this looks like a gun. So you load the gun right there and then you release the meatball like this. And then a beautifully shaped meatball exits and falls flat. Because I still don't know how to retain that, that shape. But I got the gun now. Right, so this is a bath of super cold water. It's also very salty, increasing the density of that liquid and so providing a better support to the meatballs. I can't just do this when I mentioned the word ball. Let's drop one in. Come on, that is promising. That is promising. I know I shouldn't be celebrating. This is cold water after all, so it means that it's not gonna cook it too much. I could always use boiling water and perform a parboil on that meatball. Besides providing the support needed, it might also create a skin on the outside. Par boiling. Let's test it out. The parboiling process is not intense enough to create the skin, the barrier that I need to provide structure. I don't think it's gonna work. I love the idea of, of the liquid. I think it's brilliant. Maybe I could try with another one. Maybe I could try with something that would literally fry the outside. Flash frying, that's what I'm talking about. Let's do another experiment. Right, so uh, for some reason, I was a bit reluctant initially to just deep frying or par frying or flash frying. As I was doing research on meatball origins, I found, you know, old meatball recipes in the Roman Empire and the Persian Empire, but they all seem to come from something, a Chinese recipe. So the recipe he's working on at the moment is called Lion's Head Meatballs. And the reason why it's called like this, it's because it's big, it's round, and it's golden. And the mixture he's making for that is extremely soft. Oil. Now,
<laughs> so he hasn't been uh, deep frying them for very long probably 10 to 30 seconds just to create that firm outer layer that that structure very round and they have the browning that was imparted by the deep fryer basically that's all i needed since I'm gonna drop a big meatball inside some smoking hot oil, it might splash everywhere, so it's definitely not something I would recommend you guys to try unless you're willing to, to die for just a meatball. It says a lot about myself. I want to flash fry the meatball, I don't want to deep fry it, I just wanna, you know, freeze it in time basically. The splash was enormous, but it went the other way, so... 10 to 30 seconds should be plenty, plenty time for this. Let's get it out. Oh. Guys, I think we have a keeper. Now, remember, inside it's completely raw, so I still need to find a way to cook it thoroughly, because we only cook the outer layer. So when it comes to cooking something in a slow and steady way, sous vide is a strong option. Everywhere. The vacuum machine basically sucked out all the juices because it was compressing the meatball itself. I've got juices all the way to here right now. Can't be good, to be honest. Squeezing out the juices within a mission where I'm trying to get the, the juiciest meatball possible. Well, Alex, you're very clever. Okay, I need juicy balls. Alex, save me. The man who whispered to meatball. Right, so this is not gonna work as much as I wanted sous vide. To work it's not gonna work i'm gonna focus on the oven now i need something to support the meatball since they are very soft they're definitely gonna collapse if they don't have like a hold on a second now do you remember these from the previous episode i thought they sucked they are lacking the structure you need to compress and to shape now what if i have looked at the problem the wrong way what if they could be amazing to support the meatball while it's cooking. That could be an option. That could be an option! Okay, so I'm ready. I'm gonna power fry the meatball first. Step two, I'm gonna place that almost perfect meatball in a round mold. It's getting all the support that it needs to stay around during the cooking process. <laughs> 13 very long minutes. If it doesn't work, I'm not gonna call myself a cook no more. That's a stupid promise. What if it was a good news in the end? It could be a good news. This is not looking bad. Days and days of research, miserable fails. It's time to reveal the best that I can If I drop it, I'm gonna be really, really, really mad. When you take into account all the cooking process, everything that can go wrong, plus the mixture is extremely soft, this, this is extremely round. It's a bit round like the moon, but still it's very round. Like, especially that curve, it's a beautiful one. Well, I might be biased, but I'm gonna call this method a resounding success. It's extremely good. Now I know this episode is not about the flavor, but still, it would be a shame, an outrage, if I were not to bite into this beauty of a sphere. I'm salivating. What have I created? Look, well, it's like, I've got a very, 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 very good start in terms of recipe. Mm. It feels good. Bye bye, salut. All right, stop fooling around. It's time to talk sponsor. Squarespace. Building a website on Squarespace is super easy. Squarespace has powerful blogging tools which allow you to share recipes, photos, videos, and recommendations. You can categorize, share, and schedule your posts to make your content work for you. Work! With a Squarespace mailing list, you can get the right message to the right person. Collect email addresses through your website and send subscribers the information they care about the most with unique 
mailing list. You only build your website once, but it will be displayed perfectly on a laptop, on a mobile, or even on a tablet. Each Squarespace template design has been crafted by a world-class design team, and they employ the latest HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. On top of just making and building your website on the platform, you can also buy your own domain and connect these two together. So one platform to do it all. So check out squarespace.com for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash frenchguy to get 10% off your first website or domain. Thank you Squarespace for sponsoring this video.